in order to develop the idea of being able to do work, um, what I want to start with is kind of noticing that when you lift an object, you can use that object then to do stuff. Okay, so what kind of stuff am I referring to? Well, um, a really concrete example is um, pounding in a nail. Okay, so um, trying to pound in a nail with your hands would not work, it's really hard to do, but if you lifted an object, ideally a hammer, but even something like a rock, then you can use that lifted object to pound in a nail. Um, or you could drop the rock on a nut or a coconut or something in order to break it. So doing something useful um, is going to be, I think, um, something we can encode by pounding in a nail. That'll be sort of our quintessential example of doing something. Okay, so um, what are ways that we can lift an object? Well, a really simple, straightforward way is we can just use a device called a winch. So a winch is basically a pulley with a string hanging off of it like this. Um, and it's just a motorized device that applies a tension. Okay, so there's some tension force upwards that's applied by that winch. Okay, well, if we want to figure out how much work this thing can do, um, well, we don't really have a formula yet, but what we can do is say, all right, well, if the block were heavier, then I would have to do more work to lift it. Um, and then when I drop it, that block can do more work. Okay, so it seems like somehow the work is going to depend on the force. Okay, um, also, if I lift the block higher, then I could pound in more nails with it or pound in a nail that's harder to pound in. So the work also seems to depend on the height. Okay, um, and just to kind of, um, you know, be concrete about what exactly is going on with this block, um, if we're not speeding it up as we lift it, so it's going to have a tension force on the block by the string, and downward there's going to be a gravitational force on the block by the earth, um, we're assuming that those forces are nearly balanced, you know, um, while it's moving up at a constant speed, they're exactly balanced, maybe it, um, it's, they're slightly unbalanced when it first starts moving and when it finishes moving, but we're going to ignore that part, what we're most interested in is the time when it's moving up at a constant speed. Okay, so what is the force? Well, the weight force, which is at the same size as the tension, um, is going to be m times g. So the work then is going to be that force um, maybe times the height. So this seems like a reasonable um, formula that encodes the information that we have. If we take a bigger object or lift it higher, then we can do more work with it. Um, okay, so that's one way that we can lift an object, but that's not the only way. We don't have to lift it straight up. So particularly if an object is heavy, one way that we might lift it is by pushing it up a ramp. Okay, and if we imagine that at the end of the ramp, there is a nail to pound in like this, well, if I push it off the end of the ramp, then that is just as good as lifting it straight up um, with a winch. Okay, so in this case, I'm applying a force up the ramp, and I'm applying it over some distance L that I am going to push it up that ramp. Okay, so um, what goes into then that work that I'm doing? Well, it seems like um, I'm going to have to do more work if I push it a longer distance, but also I'm going to do more work if I have to apply a larger force. So um, what sorts of things go into that? Well, um, the force, we have to figure out from a free body diagram. So I'm applying this force F, and I basically just need to overcome the weight. Let's ignore friction for now. So I'm going to have a gravitational force on the block by the earth, and maybe the up and down the ramp components of those two will cancel. Okay, so the force is going to be mg sine theta in order to push it up the ramp at a constant speed. Again, ignoring friction. And the distance that I'm pushing it is going to be L. So if I multiply those things together, then my guess for the work is going to be mg sine theta times L. Um, and notice that L sine theta is just the height. So this side here is a height h. That's how far I've lifted the block. So um, it seems like this comes out to mgh again, which is pretty cool. Maybe the work that we do um, in order to lift an object, or um, at the same time, the work that it can do when we drop it from a certain height, um, doesn't actually depend on how it gets there. It just um, depends on where it ends up. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to just tell you what the formula we use for work looks like. Okay, so um, the formula is based on the following patterns. Okay, so we notice that work goes like the force. If we have a bigger force, then we can do more work. Um, the W goes like the displacement, which I'm going to use the variable S for. So if I apply a force for a longer distance, so I lift an object higher, for instance, or push it up a longer ramp, then I have done more work and it can do more work. Um, and it seems that the work is independent of the path. Okay, so all that really matters are the start point and the end point, not how we get from one to the other. So then the formula um, is that work is equal to the force times the displacement times cosine theta. Okay, so this is the force, this is the displacement, and cosine theta is the angle, or uh, theta I should say, is the angle between the force vector and the displacement vector. Okay, so I haven't proven this. Um, this is essentially just a you know conjecture. This is um, a possible formula that we can use, and we will see that this works out nicely um, when we do some more cases.